Hi everybody, this is Pam with Jesus Junk Journals and we are continuing on with our friends journal. And I have a couple of things I wanna to do today. One is, I've got this page that I put, um, I always forget what it's called, modeling paste through a template and it's all dry and everything. And so now I wanna go back with a spray. Let's see, I am going to use this uh, it's the Golden High Flow Acrylic Paint. Um, I love using this with art journaling, and so I'm going to bring it over here and put it on here. Hit it with some water, hopefully. So this page has acrylic paint on it from my gel, uh, gel printing, and that kind of seals it so the water won't seep through too much and I'm just going to let it kind of run and wrap around the little uh, raised parts on this. So just kind of And then it goes to the bottom and of course collects and gets on my canvas fabric that I purposely laid down here to gather up my ink and paint so that I can later use this in journal. So don't want to waste anything. <laughs> I want my money's worth. <laughs> okay, so that I feel like gives some definition to those maybe just that and I think I am going I'm gonna take it actually I'm gonna use a Kleenex and kind of blot this I don't normally do that but I don't want this to be too wet because it will soak through so I think okay Probably should have let that dry, but that's okay. I don't want to lose anything on the back side, so I'm going to go ahead and let this dry. And then the next thing is I'm going to do some sewing of buttons onto my cloth page. I probably should go, let me go put this in the drying rack because I'm going to end up getting <laughs> into that wet paint. Okay, so here's my button box. And so I picked a few out um, here that I think I'm going to put on. Women love buttons, and I think that this is a way to add value, so to speak. Like, this is for your friend, and most women love buttons. And so when she sees that you've given her these lovely buttons, I think she'll feel like, you know, it was a valuable gift. So let's see if I can find... That's a sweet little clear button. I could get lost in this button box though, so I need to just like walk a step away, you know. <laughs> After I look one more time. <laughs> I'm going to stitch those on. becomes then do I want to if I do that I think what I did before when I put buttons is I put a button on the front and the back no I think I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go ahead and let it show on the other side is what I'm saying <clears throat> okay now I keep mentioning I need <laughs> cataract surgery it's like oh can I thread a needle all right I guess I can and I'll thread it with two threads so it doesn't take as long to sew on the button. If I can see the hole. This is an embroidery needle, so it's got a really big eye. <laughs> so I think I can do it. 
Okay, so you know, I've been doing that um, throwback Thursday. And so what has happened is I've noticed that uh, I have done some things in my other albums that I forgot about doing and I want to do again. So I, I noticed my last one, I, I did a lot of fabric and ribbon and lace things, you know, with like making journal cards and things that um, had those embellishments added to them and it just looks so cute. And I'm like, well, I haven't done that for a while. I need to remember to do that. So I think that was what spurred my idea to get some buttons put on here. And I, of course, love slow stitching. So I need to remember to do that. I mean, there's just so many things you can do, right? And it's like, oh. Okay, so I think that should probably hold this on. <laughs> It's not like anybody's going to be actually buttoning anything with these. And I need to remember to kind of keep them at the bottom of the page. Otherwise, it will cause the page to fold down, I think. So maybe a border at the bottom is what, I, what I'm thinking. So I'm going to do a pink one. And I kind of want it to be, of course, random that's how I am <laughs> so I don't want it to be a straight line so what are you guys up to are you making Christmas gifts because Christmas items finishing up projects I went to um, pioneer woman <laughs> Bree Drummond's town, Pawhuska, Oklahoma, which I've talked about on one of my other videos. And uh, we, we were fortunate enough to get to go to the lodge where she does her cooking show. And wow, wow, talk about done right. It was beautiful kitchen and like a meeting area where they could have like banquets and <laughs> parties and things. And then another kitchen at the back for dishwashing, it looked like, and like the utilitarian things. And they had a whole room full of their dishes, their china and serving dishes in, you know, several different colors of each. You know, like, it was really fun to look at because we all love dishes and things, right? And uh, standing there looking out over her ranch, which I believe, now I don't quote me, I'm not positive about this, but it's something like 400 and some thousand acres on their ranch. It's apparently, he's one of the largest uh, land owners in the country. And uh, so it's quite something to, and, it, and there's not a lot of trees. There's a few trees around like the bunkhouses or whatever they are down there. But other than that, it's just sort of prairie. Hence the name, <laughs> Prairie Woman or Pioneer Woman. And um, their house is, is off. It's not within view. They have a separate drive through, drive in and <laughs> drive through <laughs> um, driveway to, you know, which I don't blame them, to keep from getting so many people, you know, uh, up and around their house all the time. I'm sure that would be get old quick and then of course going in and eating at the restaurants in town the town's really small it's only got like 3,500 people in it and it's uh got an, a great big courthouse old time it's the county seat so apparently it was a lot bigger town at one time and uh some 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 of the cutest little downtown buildings you've ever seen and they're redoing them and restoring them and turning them into new businesses. And uh, there's a triangle building, kind of like a flat iron building. And uh, that is super cute. I wanna make sure I don't get this to where it's gonna mess with me on the fold. 
and that is becoming a part or a hotel rather the flat iron building hmm, which side of that i kind of like the back of it yeah i better let the better let the front show and so they're making and that's like a i don't know four or five story building i think well three three or four story building and uh just very cute and honestly we ate several meals there and um my favorite don't don't tell her <laughs> don't tell Rhea i said this but my favorite was actually the pizza um i guess that was her husband's brainchild was having the pizza place and he got a pizza and oven sent from italy and um the pizza we had was just wonderful so she probably wouldn't like hearing me say that, but that was the truth. I had the, I had the fried um, fish dinner at her restaurant. And of course, all the, like the biscuits and everything were just fabulous. Homemade jam and all that. And uh, there's a bakery upstairs, which of course she doesn't bake all the food. She has bakers that come in. They said they come in at midnight and bake until eight in the morning. <laughs> And then they open at 10. And of course, they're wonderful and cute little chairs and tables to sit at. And you look out over a second, it's in the second story. So you can look out over the town and it's a lovely place to sit and talk to your friends. Let's see. Okay, this has got wire from... 50, 60 years ago, holding this thing to a card. So let me get my little pair of pliers out. So I'm thinking about what's next, and I kind of have, my sister suggested that I do, you know, after the doing the Friends album, to maybe do one for family. So I'm kind of thinking about like, well, what would that be like? You know, what should that have in it? And so that will probably happen one of these days. And you know, like a journal for you to put pictures of your different family members in. So maybe you want to give one to your mom or your daughter or your cousin. And so places for you to have pictures of family in there for them to see, but yet still geared for that person, that special person who's getting the journal. And, uh, you know, that's another journal kind of like this one that we're working on with friends where they probably don't even know what a junk journal is. So it's, it needs to be, about them and about you and very personal and then make it lovely so they'll appreciate you know all your crafting and everything but at the same time have that those personal photos those personal notes that make it so cool and we'll make them want to hold on to it and cherish it because I don't know about you, but I want things to be functional and I want them to be valuable, so to speak, and something that people want to keep, a keepsake. I want it to have purpose. So of course, that's why we keep putting scriptures and things in there because we feel like that's the most valuable thing you can add to something is supernatural word from God. <laughs> so, it just doesn't get more valuable than that, does it? So, so yeah, so a family sort of geared one. I always kind of have in my mind, like, the next book of the Bible that could be done in a journal. You know, which kind of gives you a chance to learn that book a little bit differently. Pick out the highlights of it and sort of turn it into a study for yourself almost or for whoever you give it to. I know I learned a lot when I did the Esther, well, and the Ruth. 
and the wisdom <laughs> um, because you're reading it over and over again. You know, it says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of the Lord. So the more times you hear it, the more your faith grows. You know, one of the things I fight when I'm doing the journaling is I get in a hurry in my mind. Like I, I want to, I want to accomplish more than time permits. And so I get frustrated because, you know, it takes so long to do like this takes a long time really to do. I mean, I'm speak, I'm going to speed it up when I edit it. So you won't have to be like literally sitting here, but, um, you know, is that a thing? Is that a problem for other people? I think it is. I think we all kind of deal with that. So I'm trying to teach myself to think about small things. Think about small tasks, you know, like today I'm going to put in some grommets, <laughs> you know, or today I'm going to take this lace and make a couple of tags with it and let that be enough for the day and not be frustrated and maybe just like take it in bite-sized pieces is kind of what I'm saying and then if I have time to take two bites good I can, I can go on and do something else but just kind of think of it in smaller steps so to speak okay so I've got one button left I'm going to let it go. All right, I am going to cut this one off. I'm not liking that at all. I don't think that's going to look good. Okay. All right, so I've got my button sewn on. I like the buttons, but this cloth, if it was a cotton cloth that frayed out on the edges, I think that, um, you know, that'd be more interesting. But this has like some sort of, I think it's got some sort of synthetic mixed into it. So it's not as <laughs> pretty when it frays. So this will be a better, a better edge, I think. Hopefully, we'll see. So here we go. So if you haven't done this before... It's called slow stitching. We used to call it embroidering when I was in Girl Scouts a million years ago. <laughs> but uh, it's fun. And the slow stitching, I mean, there's, of course, perfection embroidery that can be done. And that's a whole thing in itself. But what has gotten kind of popular is to just do any sort of stitching, irregular stitching, imperfect stitching, just uh, to make marks on the cloth, so to speak, which is nice because, I and I do like the look of that, and it's also nice because you don't have to um, be perfect. You don't have to take the time it takes to be perfect, so it's a faster way to work. It still has the charm of that hand-stitched craft, I think. Okay, this is one I really will appreciate having my eye fix <laughs> when I'm trying to embroider. It's like, ay, ay, ay. Okay, so there's six strands in, in those packages of embroidery thread like you buy at Walmart. I usually go with three. Separate out three strands if you haven't done this before. And I always like to do the blanket stitch it's just a super easy one and you just kind of wrap it around pull your needle through it pull it and it really is pretty quick so for the effort that it takes it's like kind of a lot of bang for your buck so to speak for your effort because it looks impressive and it it just kind of Kind of says, you know, I spend some time on this. I care about this. But it's not hard. And again, not trying to be perfect. It makes it quicker too, so.
Okay. All right, I got that edge done. I would say, I mean, roughly, it probably took me hmm, between 20 and 30 minutes to do that. So not a big time commitment. Probably could trim that down a little bit. So anyway, there it is. I feel like it looks more finished. All right. Okay, so I am going to stop for today. And I just want to say thank you for watching. And I hope you liked it. And if you did, click the like button. Please think about subscribing. And I will see you on the next video. Bye-bye.